Well, hello everybody. This is Ron, Sir Trainer with the State of Oklahoma. Today I want to talk to you guys about the importance of communications and different ways that you can communicate. Now, I'm going to cover ham radio, but I'm also going to cover a few other things and some practical things you may want to carry along with you if you are deployed into the field and depend upon you know your role. So uh, there's a lot of different things that CERT can do. They can do uh, anything from helping direct traffic to actually being involved in uh, actual search and rescue operations. So it's going to depend on your skill level and, of course, your ability physically. That's what you're able to do into the field. But one of the things that you're always going to have to be able to do is communicate. So what we're going to talk about today is simple communications, whether it's within intercommunications within your CERT team or communicating with emergency management through ham radio or perhaps a radio that they provide you. Now, sometimes resources are overwhelmed and they don't have enough radios, let's say, for the fire department to hand out extras to people. So that's where ham operator is going to jump in and kind of help out there and set up emergency communications. So we're going to talk a little bit about different roles of communications during emergencies and like events. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to start out with, let's just talk about simple team communications. Now, I'm going to talk to you about using Zello. Zello is a good program. Uh, this is an example of Zello. Um, this is one of my channels. Y'all are welcome to, to, you know, download Zello, join the channel, listen and participate. Uh, so basically the way that it works, it's a much like the old Nextel program, uh, Direct Connect. So you push the center button, it keys up, and uh, you're able to communicate. Now whoever's on that channel is going to hear you. It doesn't matter where they live. They can live in, uh, you know, you can live where I live, Oklahoma, let's say, talk to somebody in California, Japan, wherever, around the world. So this is a good program. A lot of your storm chasers, storm spotter type people like to use this. They can communicate with one another. Works really well when you have somebody watching over you, for example, with radar. But we'll talk about that a little bit later or in some other video. So this is a good program. The problem is with it, well, it's dependent upon data. So if data goes down, uh, you have no phone service, forget it. So um, it's, it's reliable most of the time. Uh, the other thing that you can do as far as communications is two-way radio. Now, Again, if it's just your team, you know, you can maybe buy those uh, little radios you can buy, you know, bubble pack type radios you buy at Walmart or wherever, and everybody gets on channel six and you talk. The problem is that a lot of times you don't have good range, so if you're within an area and if it's not challenged terrain-wise where you have a lot of hills and things, you're going to be able to communicate pretty well. But if you get into areas where you got a lot of terrain, forget them, they're probably not going to work. So that's where ham radio comes in. A lot of people... <coughs> Or buying ham radios, but again, like I've pointed out, you got to be careful what frequencies you broadcast on these. Um, these radios, the FCC didn't like them, so they had to go back and revise them. The reason they didn't like them, you could actually program in the bubble pack radio frequencies and use them. One of the things that those bubble pack radios are not supposed to have is a removable antenna like this, so they had to go back and, and change the frequencies on them. So, unless you're a ham radio operator, I, I advise you to stay away from this or GRMS and, and, and whatever. So really got to be careful using these type of radios unless you're a ham radio operator. Again, uh, what makes ham neat is that uh, they have repeaters out there. A lot of times you can work the repeaters and set them up for emergency purposes or whatever. They only allow emergency traffic. So unless you're a ham radio operator, you're not going to be able to use it. Now we discussed in a video before that the only time you can use a ham radio in an emergency is for immediate uh, loss of life and property. So if you're in danger, you have no way to communicate, then you're allowed to use this. But if you have some other means of communication, you cannot use this. So that's the law. Um, know it. So whether you're using something like that or you're working with emergency management, it's important you kind of know some of the rules that are out there. Um, if you're a ham radio operator, this is a book that I would highly advise you to get. Um, you, you may have to pay for it. Some states hand them out to ham operators. We're working with emergency management, so uh, it's got a lot of details in it. You can see it's from the uh, Homeland Security Office, and uh, so it sets a standard nationwide. Again, that's why it's important to know NIMS. One of the other things that you're never going to want to deploy out in the field without is, again, I pointed this out in another video, probably talk about it quite a bit, is one of these CERT type manuals, so it's a good way to remind yourself when you can't remember, hey, here's your reminder. All right, so with that said, uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with ham radio. This is another ham radio, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, one of the, the attachments that I've got for it. Um, basically, it's, a, it's a, a device that will allow you to hook into a PL259 
Uh, they make them for a lot of different radios. It just depends on the connector on top. So this one won't work on that radio uh, because one's male, one's female. But what you do is you plug that in. Uh, you, folks are probably kind of familiar with this connector if you've ever had a CB. It's the same type connector. So what that's going to do, you can use an external antenna. Now you got to make sure that you have it in the right bandwidth, the right antenna, or you'll destroy your radio in due time. But this allows you to hook into a better antenna, get much better range. So this is really important to carry with you uh, in a disaster. Have this this available so that uh, yeah you can get better range out of your radio. Because a lot of times you just have a short antenna, you may have some problems getting in the repeater. So it's going to really really increase your distance if you have one of these an adapter and uh, hook it up. So uh, this is just some of the uh, accessories that you can use with a handheld to make them much more effective. The other thing that you're also going to want to carry a couple other things. Let me set that down. Is always make sure you got maybe a power converter. So if you do have a radio like that and you need to plug it in somewhere, you've got the avail availability to do that. So I'd highly advise you to get one of these. I make better ones. This is cheap. Pick one of these up about anywhere for 20 bucks, even at a truck stop. So make sure you got one of those. Good for charging or running a computer, whatever you need to do. So. It's a really good thing to have on hand, uh, so I'd highly advise you to get something like this and carry it. Again, we were talking about uh, power for devices, same thing for your phone. So you may not be able to plug your phone in for whatever reason. So something like this uh, you can pick up. Uh, I think uh, we gave these away free at uh, September uh, Fest or whatever we call it there at, at the Capitol here a while back. So uh, they were doing it every year and they were making people aware of uh, being prepared during emergencies. So this is something they were giving away. Really good item to have, carrying a pocket charger. Uh, so additionally, as far as radios are concerned, uh, you may want to carry a little longer antenna, get you a little better uh, range as well. It's not so much receiving, it's transmitting where you really run into problems, but receiving as well. So this is something that fits on, on radios. You can find these online. Um, it's good. Uh, to carry, I carry it in my backpack, so if I need additional range, I have that. One of the other things that I carry as well is this little roll-up antenna. You can clamp it up on a window and use it. It's meant to be used in a vehicle um, in place of a mobile antenna. But I, I have this. I, I keep it extra. Anytime I'm out storm spotting, I take this with me. If I'm in somebody's vehicle is not a ham radio operator, I've got it for that extended range. Or I'll take a mag mount and carry this as well. So remember that old rule. One is zero and two is one. So if you've got something like this, um, it's a great thing. Uh, additionally, you can take this with you. Let's say you were working on field operations and uh, you were concerned about transmitting out. This is something you'd hook up to, let's say, the Bayo thing, what this is specifically made for, uh, uh, this type of adapter. But anyway, so you put it on top of the where the antenna goes, screw this in, and you could possibly hook this to something else. Or if you had a stick or a walking stick or whatever, uh, raise it up and, and get you that additional range. So this is something that I carry in my backpack all the times when I'm deployed just to make sure that when I'm, I need to transmit that I can transmit. So these are some of the items that I want to go over with in communications. Remember again, uh, communications is the most important part of any operation because if you can't communicate you're not going to know what to do, you're not going to get that information out. So I just wanted to share that with you today. I hope you like this video. I would ask that you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to cover a lot of different subjects with CERT. If you have questions or something you want me to cover, feel free to ask. So I thank you for watching this video. Have a wonderful day.